Have you ever had that one game you consistently played as a kid? That one game that never seemed to get old and always found itself glued to your console because you never took it out? And because you're a kid, it always seemed to be some random title no one knows about because, let's be honest, everyone has an arc of their childhood. I was born in the 2000s, and yet I still grew up with retro consoles like the NES and Super Nintendo. My dad's NES library had some solid titles, but my Super Nintendo selection was lacking in a lot of areas. But if you dug past the five sports games and the one Ninja Turtles tournament fighter, you would find a pretty well-used cartridge. One that holds a lot of random and specific memories. Today, I'm opening up the Nostalgia Vault and digging deep into some of my earliest gaming experiences. This cartridge holds a pretty special place in my heart and is truly one game that I will never forget. And I'm 100% certain I'm not alone with this feeling because today I'm reminiscing about a little known game named Super Mario World. Welcome to Nostalgia Vault, the show where I reminisce and talk about uh, odd and very specific platforms. As I mentioned in the intro, I grew up with a lot of hand-me-down consoles. I grew up in the 2000s, but my parents didn't really buy the latest and greatest when it came to, uh, I guess, technology and uh, video games especially. And so I grew up with my dad's NES, and I think my parents got a Super Nintendo at college or something, but it was always hand-me-downs. And so I grew up with games like Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES and Punch-Out and Bubble Bobble and Double Dragon, but I never really had the latest and greatest until probably about the Wii. When it came to my Super Nintendo, uh, compared to my NES library and my N64 library, um, it was lacking in a lot of areas to uh, say the least. My dad was a huge sports fan and so uh, I would say even my NES library, about 80% of the games that I had were sports games. I remember playing NBA Jam on the Super Nintendo. I love NBA Jam. When it came to Super Nintendo and playing the Super Nintendo, uh, I only had two other games that didn't involve sports and the other one, one of them was a Ninja Turtles tournament fighter. I think my aunt and uncle uh, bought it at a pawn shop or something, just kind of randomly. I don't know if I got it for Christmas, I don't even remember. But I just remember getting this random Ninja Turtles game and I remember playing it a lot because again, it didn't involve sports. And of course, the other game that was mentioned in the library was Super Mario World. Now, I think of Super Mario World as probably the furthest impactful title in my childhood. I just remember it being so uh, different compared to a lot of games that I played, especially in the platformer genre. It had a huge world to explore. It was very atmospheric with like its music and just there was caves, there was dinosaurs, there was forests, and there was just so many different things that made it so atmospheric that I just enjoyed playing it compared to any other game on the Super Nintendo. And so that's why it was really just glued to my console because I never got sick of it and it had it was a really big game. There was a good chunk of stuff to do in it. And so I just really never put it down at an early age. And I don't even remember, I think I played it around like four years old. I, I don't, it, I was really young. <laughs> and uh, you can really tell I played it a lot. You can really tell that this game was well used uh, in my childhood and really just my family's childhood because uh, this is my Super Mario World cartridge. Like I said, you can really tell that this game has been used. There's no denying that this is my cartridge. It has a big strip of tape that's probably about 11 years old by now. Holding this thing together, uh, let's just say that this would not be a top seller on eBay. You know, I never really thought about getting a brand new cartridge of Super Mario World because this cartridge is distinctly mine. It's distinctly my family's. There's probably no other cartridge out there that has a big strip of tape holding it together. And it's just, I don't know, it just adds this 
huge amount of charm to it and the fact that it's still functional i mean this is actually the uh, original cartridge playing right now as i speak and so the fact that it still works and it's still functional and it just, i don't know it just it's very charming to me and i don't really know why i don't think i'll ever get rid of it or replace it ever. So apparently, uh, before I was born, I believe, or at a very young age where I don't remember any of this, uh, my brother was playing in the living room, and the Super Nintendo, I think, was on the ground at the time. It was just sitting on the ground, and Super Mario World was in the console. And so, uh, my brother was kind of being a little uh, rowdy in the living room, and uh, this, is, this story is coming from him. And so, he's running around the living room, and there's a couch, and all of a sudden, he he kind of jumps over the couch and kind of stumbles onto the ground and as he tries to catch himself from jumping over the couch his hand kind of sticks out like this and as he catches himself his hand clips the very top of the cartridge that's sitting in the console and snaps the game in half well the outside shell at least so uh they pull it out and uh they didn't really know what to do and uh my brother said that my mom just kind of grabbed some tape and taped it together hoping and praying that it would work and surprisingly enough it worked and it still works to this day it is insane. I actually don't really know how the motherboard did not get clipped. I mean, if my brother's hand was probably uh, even remotely lower and completely snapped the cartridge in half, then we'd probably be, uh, you probably wouldn't be seeing me make this video right now. But the fact that his hand barely clipped the top of it and just snapped it apart, um, it was salvageable and it actually works still. And so, Yes, it may be beat up. Yes, it may look kind of um, ugly to some, but to me, it is extremely charming. And I love the fact that my Super Mario World cartridge just has a big story behind it. I just love that so much. <laughs> I loved Super Mario World for many different reasons. Uh, I just remember, again, the world was just this grand, big world compared to a lot of games that I played at that time. And with that huge world to explore, I just felt like the gameplay was enhanced because of how big and how many secrets were involved in this game. Compared to uh, the other platformers I played at the time, like Super Mario Brothers 3 and different things like that, uh, there was still secrets, but they always felt a little bit more uh, cryptic and just, there wasn't as many. When it came to Super Mario World, I remember there was so many secrets to be discovered. You had so many different levels that had different keyholes or secret exits to find, uh, just secret levels, like the top secret area that's found above that ghost house that gives you free items at all times. That is just such a cool little secret place to me. Uh, the fact that you can find four different hidden Switch palaces all across the world that help and enhance uh, and make different parts of different levels easier the further you go. Uh, it, it's just, I loved that. And don't even get me started on Star World. Star World was amazing. That was just such a cool secret to discover. And on top of Star World, then you got the secret world, the the secret above all secrets, <laughs> it just blew my mind as a kid. In fact, the typical route that I would take when playing this game was never really to beat Bowser, but it was always to get to the secret world. I would always start up a file, get like the first three Switch palaces, and then make my way up to Star World, and then from there, go to the top secret world, play that through, and then you have this giant easter egg where if you finish all of secret world the whole like color palette of the game switches and a couple of enemies switch to like mario heads and weird pumpkins i never understood this this was just such a weird easter egg to me but the fact that it was in the game i loved that it was so awesome i loved it so much and so that's what i found myself doing i always found myself just trying to find all these secrets and just discover everything that super mario world had to offer like the the amount of satisfaction that came from picking up a key and taking it to a keyhole and the animations all being like 
it was super satisfying. That's all I'm trying to say. But I also remember that when you would like eat a key with Yoshi and you had Yoshi with you, you could take it to a keyhole and it would do the animation, but you could also spit it out during the animation and it would just make this funny little noise. And I, it was just, you know, just those specific things I remember as a kid. It just, I just got a kick out of that. <laughs> but in doing these secrets, especially at a young age, uh, there was always uh, challenges that came with it, especially when you got to the top secret world. Like that was just, on a whole different level, especially level two. I, I really don't even want to talk about how difficult level two is. Even today, I struggle with level two of the top secret world because it's just so challenging. The level was all about uh, having the the balloons. I forgot what the balloon. Level two involved like the power balloons or whatever that like made you inf inflate and float uh, all across and you just had to like kind of keep getting those power ups across the whole level. And it was just so hard because you had all these projectiles coming at you. You had to find which block was the correct one that had the correct power up. And it was just this constant cycle of difficulty, sheer difficulty. And, and imagine doing that as like a five year old. That level sucked and it still sucks to this day and i i really think it's probably one of the hardest levels in mario platforming history <laughs> the secrets were always my biggest uh enjoyment out of the game even if they did have its challenges with all these secrets came my my imagination just exploded really i just remember there was a lot of different times where i would just check different levels because i didn't know that specific levels actually indicate if they have a secret or not. And I didn't know that as a kid, so I would find myself just kind of running around different levels trying to explore or just find anything new. Uh, and there was one specific one I remember. It was found in World 6, and on the world map, it's on the bottom right corner, and there's like these two little islands kind of away from that uh, main island, and I always thought that there was like some sort of secret to get to those small islands to maybe access more levels or even a whole new world. Like my mind would always go like, oh, what if there's a whole new world like Star World or, or Top Secret World, you know, like a whole new island. And so I always thought about that, but sadly I never found it, but it was still just something that I really loved about Super Mario World. It was just the amount of secrets you could find, the amount of excitement that happened when you would find a, even just an alternate path, you know? There was just so many different things that the game offered compared to a lot of the gaming experiences that I had in my childhood. And so I really loved everything about Super Mario World, but the secrets really just hit home to me. <laughs> And now for the final segment of the video, the one segment that basically perfectly describes the nostalgia vault. Um, so when when you have nostalgia, sometimes I feel like it just kind of jumps out at you within very oddly specific things in certain games. And for me, I have that feeling with Super Mario World, and I'll kind of explain it as I go. So I'll give you an example here. So. In Super Mario World, uh, I think in World 3, there is a ghost house that holds these green hazardous bubbles. Now, you literally only see these bubbles in the that ghost house alone. There is no other place that has this object. There's no other place that has this like effect or whatever. Uh, literally, it's only that ghost house. And I remember as a kid, I always forgot where these things were located. I always remember them because they were very distinct and they were literally just that. And so whenever they would show up, I would always get like jump scared by them because I never expected it. And I was always like, oh my gosh, these things are giant. They're just, they're so just in your face when they show up. It's just like they jump scare you and it's just kind of suiting that they're in a ghost house. <laughs> so with them being big and with them being green and bubbly, uh, you kind of just create a recipe for activating a kid's humor. And so I always called them fart bubbles um, because again, they're big, they're green. What else are you gonna call them? <laughs> Whenever I think of Super Mario World, my mind goes to these very specific things. And one of them is these green bubbles. So that's just a little taste of what this segment is all about. And really what Nostalgia Vault is really all about. 
So okay, now that we got that one out of the way, let's move on to something a lot more specific. World six, there is an underground level that has these melon shaped platforms. I don't even, where do I go from here? <laughs> so exactly like the green bubbles, these only appear in like a handful of levels. And so whenever I saw them, I was always like, whoa, I've never seen that before. I've never seen these weird carrot-like melon platforms. I don't even know what to call them, but they're just, it's so specifically me. Like, I don't, I guarantee no one else has this feeling of literally this nostalgic memory of seeing these melon platforms for the very first, first time. Like, I don't think anyone has that. And if they do, I would be shocked. Honestly, I'd be so shocked. But that is specifically just such a nostalgia vault memory that it's just like, what the heck? Who else would have this? Literally a memory of melon shaped platforms of all things. I remember this level very vividly because one, of course the platforms and two, uh, the lava was actually changed to like, um, I believe it's chocolate. I, I would assume it's chocolate because it's Choco Island, but the lava was switched to like a chocolate, like very boiling hot chocolate. And so I just remember like, there's the specific platform that like kind of dips into it. And I'd always like, just hang out there for like a little bit and be like, how close can I get to the chocolate or whatever? I just see like, this is just so, so distinct. It's so, uniquely me, it's just hilarious. <laughs> so again, yeah, that, that's the, the melon shaped platforms. That's literally one of the most specific things I remember about Super Mario World. I don't know why, I really don't know why. They just, they are fascinating to me. I just sound so much like a nerd, you know? <laughs> so, okay, let's just move on to the next thing. So again, just like the melon shaped platforms, just like the green bubbles, there are these weird candle like platforms. They are found in, again, only a handful of levels, and they always reminded me of just candles with like these colored like wicks on the top. And it was really interesting because again, whenever I would see something just out of the norm, out of like the typical palette, it just always interests me. Because again, it's not like your typical tile set that just kind of like is reused for over half the game. No, they, they just, they come out of nowhere and it's like, whoa, like this is new, this is different and I don't see this very often. So actually in one of the same levels uh, with the candle-like platforms, there was these green um, bouncy lines. I, I don't really know how to, I guess, describe them. They would just hang off the wall and they were really bouncy and they'd make this funny noise. And that's another thing that was really just distinct and very just, it just stood out to me, was these bouncy platforms that you would find um, in cave levels or just really random places. Uh, and so that's also kind of on the list. Like, I don't really know what to call them, but it was just like a these bouncy platforms. I, again, Super distinct. And I think the last one I can think of is like um, in, I think the first castle of the game, there was like these crushers that would come from the ceiling and like an auto scrolling section. And I always looked at those as like giant, like graham crackers, like stomping you. And I just remember those were kind of terrifying to me for a while. All those things from green bubbles to melon shaped platforms to candle like platforms to green trampoline things to these graham cracker stompers these things super weird to describe these things take up a portion of my nostalgia vaults for super mario world and they just give me these like nostalgic feelings these nostalgic vibes and i really I really hope this makes sense to some people, because if not, then I'm probably just going crazy. <laughs> Verbally processing all this is just super weird to me. I don't know if you can tell, I'm pretty sure you can, but I'm just rambling at this point about literally having nostalgic feelings for very odd specific things in Super Mario World. There you have it. <laughs> and so those are some of my nostalgic memories of Super Mario World. Um, this The game really holds a special place in my heart for many reasons. And like I mentioned before, it's a great game on its own, 
but there was just so many different aspects to it that I just, I was just immersed in the world. As a kid, I really immersed myself into that world, and I don't know if I've ever had a game like that since. If you think about all these different memories, all these different experiences, you can just tell as a kid I was so immersed. From being terrified of the fish, the porky puffer chasing me, uh, to trying to find every hidden secret within the island, uh, to having the, just these really unique experiences with new settings, new objects, new platforms. You just can tell, like, my feelings towards it. I was just so immersed in the world. And really, that's just, it takes up a big portion of my nostalgia vault. It's just, it's crazy to me. It's super cool looking back, honestly. I think this episode kind of perfectly encapsulates the Nostalgia Vault series and what to expect going forward. Super Mario World has a lot of random and specific memories and feelings about random and specific things. When I say people don't really go in depth with their nostalgia, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Everyone kind of just claims they have nostalgic memories. Everyone kind of claims they just have that nostalgic feeling, but they never really go and dive any deeper than that. This was really kind of an interesting episode because I verbally processed really weird things, like really specific things. To me, that's what a nostalgia vault is. It's the specifics. It's the weird and quirky things that only you feel. To me, it's super fascinating. And I believe everyone has a nostalgia vault. I believe everyone has those experiences with specific things, and I love the beauty of that. Nostalgia is interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what else to say. It's beautiful, it's fascinating, and to me, I feel like more people should express it. And so, if you have any nostalgic memories of Super Mario World, anything really specific, I would love to hear any of them down below in the comments. So, thank you for watching, thank you for listening to uh, me just kind of open up this really deep part of my nostalgia vault and really just dig into the specifics of Super Mario World and the experiences I had with it. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I will catch you guys later. See you later. <laughs>